Today we've got the RTX 2070. Now I picked this card up on a used deal for 200 Australian dollars, which would make it roughly 135 US dollars. And at this price, it is no doubt that it is an absolute bargain. Though what I'm gonna talk about in today's video is probably different to a lot of other videos you may see out there on YouTube. That's because I have a huge focus on used price performance. And so what I'm gonna do is throw up the typical benchmarks for you guys. I'm actually gonna throw up one for you first. Just gonna pick this one at random, let's pick uh, returnal and what we're seeing here is all these cards some people look at these benchmarks right they'll look at these benchmarks and go oh the rx 6700 xt is the best or the rx 6600 xt is beating out the rtx 2060 super or the rtx 2070 and for me when i look at these graphs all i see is okay they are all in the same league here what can i get the best deal on for these GPUs. So all these GPUs in this graph are on my radar when it comes to looking for used deals. And I think that's what separates uh, me from a lot of other tech tubers out there is because I'm just looking at raw value all the time. It doesn't get into the nitty gritties. One might beat one at another game and at another resolution. But when you are looking for the best value to either build yourself a gaming PC or do what I do, and that's resell gaming PCs, you're looking at not just those numbers, but more importantly, you're looking at the price and the condition of the card. Now, this card was in fantastic condition when I bought it. The guy showed me a video of it running and he even met me halfway to save me time and gas whilst meeting up with him. So really good sellers out there on the used market. Of course, you can come into some bad sellers when it comes to used price performance. Recently, in one of my episodes of the $100 Flip Up Challenge, I got hosed for about 50 Aussie dollars because someone sold me and lied to me, sold me a faulty card. Though, what we've also got to look at is something that's so important with these GPUs. And that is when it comes to reselling gaming PCs mainly, you'll notice that the 2060 Super and the 2070 are virtually neck and neck in these benchmarks. They're almost the same card. And that's because when we look at the tech specs, they actually are pretty much the same card. It's got 6% more CUDA cores on the 2070, but everything else is pretty much the same. You've got the same amount of VRAM, you've got the same bit bus, and you've also got similar power consumption. However, that 70 RTX 2070, 2060 Super, 60, 70, 60, 70, and I know some of you might be laughing already, but people associate higher numbers automatically as just being better. This is not just true for GPUs, it's the same for CPUs. And it can be so strong to the point where a GT 1030 will outsell, say, a GTX 950, even though the 950 is a much better GPU than the GT 1030. That's just a classical example. But what I'm getting at here is always go for the higher number if you're reselling gaming PCs. Because if I put this in a gaming PC, it's gonna sell a lot better than a gaming PC with an RTX 2060 Super. So let's look at more of these benchmarks right after today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Antec and the Performance One Full Tower ATX case, supporting the ability to mount up to 400 millimeter GPUs in length, including all the latest RTX 4000 series cards, and having the ability to mount two 360 millimeter radiators simultaneously. Then there's a digital CPU and GPU temperature readout, as well as smart cable management covering. So even if you're messy with cable management, you can still make a beautiful build. Links in description below to find out more. So the first benchmark we went through was Returnal. Pretty much nothing to see here. Cards are all performing really well. The next game we're gonna pull up has a slight favor to Nvidia, at least for the testing that I've done here, and that's Fortnite. And this is at 1080p high and 1440p high settings. What we can see here is they're virtually the same, the 2060 Super and the 2070. The RX 6600 XT, I'm gonna pull attention to this because I haven't actually tested this card in a while and it was doing really good in the benchmarks. In fact, when I went and checked on my local marketplace, there was one up for $200. I messaged the guy, put in an offer of 150. So if I can get that card for 150 Aussie dollars, I am absolutely laughing in terms of best value for money. Now pulling up the next game here is Baldur's Gate 3. I do test this in a very different manner. I test this from the most stressful part of the game. And this is where you're actually seeing a big difference in the 0.1% lows between some of these cards. This benchmark would easily be the Achilles heel for the RTX 4060, but the 2070 and the 2060 Super perform pretty similar here. And the 6600 XT and the 6700 XT 
have no problems getting down and booging on the benchmark dance floor. Though then moving on to Starfield, this one heavily favors AMD GPUs, so no surprise to see that the 6700 XT is coming out well on top, but also the 6600 XT beats all the other cards here in the lineup and then we're moving on to the final game here apex legends which is a very popular multiplayer title i do like to test this and we're seeing here that it's pretty much similar to the other games here where the cards are all in the same league at both 1080p and 1440p though one thing i did notice about this game was the 6700 xt at least from my testing did have some drops in the 0.1 percent lows and the 6600 xt didn't suffer as badly here anyhow final results to go through with this card you've got the ray tracing advantage on nvidia cards here the 2070 actually performs really well for ray tracing especially if you're looking at this versus the 6600 or the 6600 xt and you've also got dlss 2 and 3 doesn't work on 2000 and 3000 series cards but good thing is you can use fsr 3 which not gonna lie i've actually got to test in depth fsr 3 versus dlss 3 still so i can make up my own mind on it and the last benchmark we are throwing up here today is the power consumption and here's where this model in particular did draw slightly lower power than the 2060 Super that we tested. So that might have had a little bit more aggressive clocks, but this 2070 definitely did a good job in terms of being pretty balanced, especially for its age. This is a card now that is five years old and the 2070 Super and 2060 Super are about four years old. So they are starting to show their age, but the good thing is with the RTX 2000 series, especially and onwards, was the undervolting options are pretty flexible. Here is where I was able to actually get on this card. It was very impressive in terms of undervolting. I was able to get around 1800 megahertz at 850 millivolt and then boost the memory slider about 400 megahertz, which gave it very similar performance to the out of the box settings, except I had a nice power drop. So with those benchmarks aside, this card is performing as I expected it to perform, except if you're looking for a used GPU on the 2070, I would look for the 2070 super because that does have actually quite a bit of a boost over the 2070 in that it's actually based on the rtx 2080 silicon where the 2070 and the 2060 super are actually based on the same silicon so you're getting a bit of an upgrade there not just in the amount of more cuda cores you're getting you also got a bigger juicier piece of silicon and of course will draw a bit more power but it's going to give you more performance the other things to look out for with the 2070 is its age and i would look personally at whether it has an eight pin single or an eight pin jewel and here it's got an eight pin single so i can use this with say a budget 450 watt power supply and be pretty confident based on those power consumption figures that it's going to actually work fine in a flip providing i'm using a good 450 watt power supply i'm not using one of those fake ones with some crappy numbers on it and then you look at the 12 volt line you're like oh no this ain't gonna run a 2070 at all Anyhow, guys, that's the gist of it with the 2070. You've seen the benchmarks. Definitely just look for these cards at the right price. Getting one for 200 Aussie dollars, that's well below what I would actually pay max for one of these. I'd pay around 250 Aussie dollars max for one of these, which would be around maybe 170 USD. On eBay, they currently, the supermodels actually go for around 200 USD. If you can get them a little bit cheaper locally, because sellers do sell for more on ebay because of the fees and the postage and stuff so if you can pick up a 2070 super for 170 usd then you're going to be laughing you've got great price performance there the last thing to look at with the rtx 2070 is the eight gigabytes of vram i'm indifferent about this i don't really have one opinion that favors one side or the other i'm like eh, eight gigabytes for me is absolutely fine though if that's something that you really stress over you're losing sleep you're like i'm not going to be able to sleep unless i have 12 gigabytes or even 16 gigabytes of vram then there are other choices out there of course i've just had an absolutely great gaming experience on this card at 1080p and 1440p i wouldn't bother playing with this thing at 4k it's not really built for that even when it was first released it wasn't really labeled as a 4k gaming card so with that aside when it comes to used gravis cards always look at the benchmarks always look at the money that's going to be leaving your wallet and make that decision for yourself where i'm saying this right now all these cards on these benchmarks right here they're all good to me it's just they look a lot better if they're cheaper and this is one of the better deals that i've got even all year round as compared to some of the other deals that i was getting on used gpus for instance rtx 3060s the minimum i get them for is around 200 usd and so this coming in at 130 usd getting similar performance if i was building my own used gaming pc would be right up there on the list 
in terms of a great pickup. Anyhow guys, with all that aside, do let us know in the comments section below what used GPUs have you been picking up or have you been looking at lately? Because I've definitely got the RTX 2070 on my radar. Do let us know as well what you think of the 2070 in 2023 going on 2024. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Cameron1343. And they ask, what are your thoughts on the 1080 Ti? That should have been on the list. I did a used GPU list. I'll put the link up to that video if you haven't seen it. Or do a vid on it. Love your vids. So to answer this question quickly with the 1080 Ti, since I've been back in Australia, I actually haven't found any good deals on 1080 Ti's because people are generally asking too much for them. They are, say, around 350 Aussie dollars versus a 1080 or a 1070, which I can pick up much cheaper. And because I'm using it for a purely a used gaming PC flip, I'm not really going to be getting that extra premium that I pay on a 1080 Ti, especially not at the prices people are asking for locally. But as of making this video, there was one up for sale for 250 Aussie dollars, except the guy was on holiday or something, so he won't be back. Though if you've been watching this far, you'll know my thoughts on it is that it's a really solid card. You just got to get the right price. And actually, when I was in Japan, I was picking up some really good deals on 1080 Ti's. So always, guys, just look at the price, look at the performance, and away we go. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech, yes, content, then you know what to do. Peace out for now. Bye.